Hey guys, welcome back to New Breed Film Reviews. This is Dave, and we are on episode 77. And on this episode, I'm going to be doing a solo review on The Revenant, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. The Revenant is directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty interesting name. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, it's just fun to pronounce. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. Apologies if I didn't. So this movie got 8.3 on IMDb. It got an 81% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 77% on Metacritic. The 81% on Rotten Tomatoes, very well deserved. Honestly, uh, it could have got a higher score. Like it was a really, freaking good movie. I'm going to do like um, a general review on it and then I might get into spoilers, but I'm going to give you guys fair warning and uh, you'll have like ample time to get off the episode so the movie doesn't get ruined for you. So let's see, uh, where do I start with this movie? I guess I'll start with um, the things that I really liked about it. One of the things that that stood out to me was the cinematography. The cinematography and the camera work for this movie was like absolutely stunning. Just beautiful, innovative shots. They use like wide angle uh, lenses, just surreal, take you away from, from your reality cinematography. Just kudos to that cinematographer. And that cinematographer was... Emmanuel Lubezki. So Emmanuel Emmanuel Lubezki, props to you, sir. Kudos. Great job. Another aspect of this movie was um, the acting. Leonardo DiCaprio. It's funny. There's like this like ongoing joke with him. Like, when are you going to give this man an Oscar? <laughs> and it's hilarious because um, to me, like winning an Oscar and winning awards that is a gauge of your acting ability and um, it's a cool nod to you, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Like there's, there are plenty of actors who haven't won an Oscar who, who don't have a lot of awards that are like some of the greatest of all time. You know, sometimes that's, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, it is in your night for whatever reason. And uh, you just don't win one. And it, it's funny. Uh, Brian had asked me, if uh, Brian from New Breed, this podcast, he asked me if Leonardo deserves an Oscar for this movie. And my response was, and this is going to sound crazy, my response was no. And the reason I say that is because, um, I don't know, like I'm gauging it with like his other performances and I don't, I don't think it's his best performance. You know, it was an amazing performance, but it wasn't his best. And I guess I'm still kind of salty and bitter about him not winning the Oscar for Wolf of Wall Street. I have no freaking idea how that man did not win an Oscar for that movie. That was like a godlike performance. It, incredible. Um, probably the crown jewel of like his acting career. And again, how he didn't win the Oscar, I, I just don't get it. You know, and comparing that performance to The Revenant, Wolf of Wall Street crushes it hands down. But his performance in The Revenant was freaking awesome. And he probably will win the Oscar. You know, uh, it really depends like who he's nominated against. But I don't think a lot of people had strong performances like that. Like his competition, he's probably like a shoo-in. Just, just. I'm going to put it that way. He's, he's probably going to win the Oscar, but it's, um, it's a long time, like overdue. Leonardo DiCaprio is, he's a, he's already a legendary actor to me. You know, um, the man, he is Oscar material. And if he doesn't win it this time, who cares? He's still going to go down to me as like one of the greats. 
The other standout of this movie, and it's no surprise, Tom Hardy. Now, this movie, The Revenant, excited me because it was kind of like when Pacino and De Niro did Heat. And you got two legendary actors at the top of their game. And at that time, I don't know if uh, Pacino and De Niro were at the top of their game. They probably were like <laughs> out of their like acting prime, but they still had it. And just to have them both in a movie was like freaking nuts. And I felt the same way about these guys. Those of you who follow the podcast, you know that I'm a tremendous, a huge Tom Hardy fan. He is my favorite actor right now. He's been my favorite actor for quite a bit. Um, I first saw his performance in Bronson and I was just like blown away. And I felt the same way about Christian Bale after watching American Psycho and The Machinist. Like Michael Fassbender is in that same league. These guys um, just transform themselves and become the role. Tom Hardy, um, he is like an acting chameleon. Like the man has like a British accent. So every role he gets into, you have to think about it. He's he's changing his voice for every role. That has to make it harder to like mask that accent. Um, he He's so freaking versatile. And uh, for you guys who follow the Facebook page, there was like this debate within New Breed where I felt that Tom Hardy was far more versatile than Leonardo DiCaprio. Brian and Paul believe that DiCaprio is more versatile. And it's not a debate of like who's a better actor because they're both, to me, equally as good. Like Leonardo has been in the game longer. He's had more time to build a bigger name. He's had more time to get more clout in the game and get, you know, really good roles and just to like work on his craft. But I think that Tom Hardy was born to be an actor. Like the man just has a natural talent. He's absolutely amazing. And not a question of who's a better actor. It's who's more versatile. And when you think about it, Tom Hardy's more versatile. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into a whole rant on this debate, but I'm just trying to get my point across on him and, and, and why I like him so much. Um, if you look at his career, he played, uh, Britain's most violent criminal in Bronson. He got like bulked out physically, gained weight for the role, uh, for the movie Warrior. He got ripped to shreds and played a convincing MMA fighter. And like, I would know because I have a background in that. So when I tell you that Warrior is the most realistic MMA movie to date, it is. And he was believable, man. Um, he is just, uh, he's done romantic comedies, you know, like, uh, like action comedies, like w with Reese Witherspoon and Chris Pine. Um, I mean, you could just go down the list. Uh, he played twins in the movie Legend. He just, um, crime movies, the drop, like a low key, uh, you know, uh, mafia type role. He just, th the man, he is an acting chameleon. Um, not taking away anything from Leo, but can you ever picture Leonardo DiCaprio in a superhero, a supervillain role? You know, like that's another nod that Tom Hardy has. And, and few people can do that. Like Johnny Depp could bounce back from f crazy fantasy films and go back to like real acting. You know, Hugh Jackman did the same thing with Wolverine and Tom Hardy does it. Tom Hardy played a larger than life Mad Max. Uh, he played a uh, Bane from Batman you know, out of like reality characters. And then he comes back to do regular acting roles. That's versatility to me, you know, and, and compared to Leo, he's got more range, but that's me. That's my opinion. And again, not taken away from Leonardo. I'm going to go back to giving him some love. Leonardo is, he's fucking fantastic. Like he is one of the greats. He will go down as one of the greats. Um, He's bound to win an Oscar. He's probably going to get it for the Revenant. But Tom Hardy's bound to win an Oscar also. And I'm going to tell you what movie it prob it's probably going to be. He's going to play Sir Elton John. Um, Tom Hardy in that role, he's going to kill it. He's going to transform himself into the legendary singer Elton John. And that's the movie that's probably going to get him the Oscar. Anyway, rant, rant, back on The Revenant. Sorry about that, folks. The Revenant was an awesome movie. Two thumbs up from me. 
as far as their performances, uh, Leo and Tom Hardy, I kind of found Tom Hardy more entertaining. His character was like a cool, quirky bad guy. He made me laugh a couple of times. Um, I'm just fascinated and amazed by the guy, how he just like transforms himself into like a character. Leo obviously had tons of uh, more screen time. He was the lead character. That's a given. What his character went through in, in the movie was like just nuts, man. He went through so much shit in the movie. And um, I'm sure Leo had to had to put himself through a lot of a lot of different things. Like uh, I, I imagine like some kind of a training regiment like in, in the woods, like survival, because I believe he he really gets into his character as well. Some something like a Daniel Day Lewis like does his research and really tries to put on his best performance. But uh, Leo's character, man, um, he went through so much crap. And from the trailer, uh, this is not spoiling anything. You you see that he gets attacked by a bear. Now I'm not gonna really talk about what happens, you know, with that. Um. Or the results of the attack. But I have to tell you, when I saw that scene, I was like, I never want to be attacked by a fucking bear. <laughs> like, it was the most vicious, gruesome thing um, I've seen in a while. It was like a very realistic attack. And I- I've never been attacked by a bear. But I imagine that that's what happens to you. You get jacked up. And his character did. Um, what else can I say about this movie that I enjoyed? I thought the music was fantastic. Whoever did the score, great, great job. I'm going to close up this review. I'm just going to say, um, for you people listening, if you haven't seen The Revenant, go check it out. It's worth the price of a ticket. It's a little bit long and it's a slower build. It has to build up to things, but stick with it. It's a great movie. Um, it's, it's very deep. It has action, visually stunning. Brian informed me that, um, the whole movie was shot with natural lighting, which is crazy impressive, insanely impressive. And I believe it added like another dimension to the film, you know, being out in the wilderness. It just, it just added something to it. I don't know. Um, if I can grade the revenant, um, I gave it a grade already because I've reviewed this movie a few times on, uh, on other, uh, podcasts, but, um, I may not be consistent with this grade because, you know, time goes by and you may think about movies and like them even better than the first time around. And I'm going to give The Revenant a B plus. Uh, it definitely has, uh, my stamp of approval. I would own it. And this is the thing with me, like how much I would pay for it on Blu-ray. That's a gauge of how much I like the movie. For you guys following the podcast, you would know that. Um, I would pay upwards to like, this is how much I like this movie. I'll, I'll pay upwards to like 15 bucks for it on Blu-ray. It was that good. It's kind of like a must own and I highly recommend it. So that's going to wrap up my review on The Revenant. Uh, I'm sure Brian and Paul will get on here, probably Gil, and we'll do like a group discussion. I probably won't talk too much because it'll be like my fourth time reviewing it. And I'm a little uh, Revenant burnt out. So that wraps up episode 77, guys. We will catch you back with 78. Uh, f- thank you for the subscriptions, for the plays. We really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe on iTunes if you like the podcast. So we have a we have a Twitter. We're on YouTube. We have a Facebook page. We're like all over the place, like every podcast directory. So uh, again, catch you next episode and take care. Mm-hmm.